we are back, ladies and gentlemen, for the interview portion of tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And our special guest in studio is the Barrett 50 Cal BMG that I just shot about 70 rounds out of the other day. Absolutely amazing. We're going to be talking to the Barrett about how it's only been used in one crime since it was invented in the last 30 years against an armored truck. Uh, and how the establishment wants to ban things like Bushmasters and the 223, well, they're also trying to ban you, uh, Mrs. Barrett, who I do want to say are a very, very lovely lady. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people got very excited yesterday when I said on the radio that Immortal Technique, one of or if not the most uh, successful independent rappers or hip hop stars in the world. Millions and millions of downloads, hundreds of thousands of uh, CDs back when they still had that, was coming to town. But they couldn't make it yesterday, but they're here today in Austin, Texas, to talk about uh, The Martyr, uh, his new CD, uh, very powerful music, and a new film he's got coming out with some pretty big heavy hitters. And so, uh, coming up in about 15 minutes, we'll go to break. We'll uh, play the trailer to the new uh, DVD, and then we will come back with our guest. Uh, but he goes by Tech, Immortal Technique, is here in studio with us uh, with the beautiful Barrett 50 Cal. And Immortal, are you getting a little bit excited right here? You got to admit, that is a beautiful piece of work right there, isn't it? Somebody spent a lot of time creating this thing. Someone used their imagination very, very well, and I'm pretty sure they were overcompensating for something as well. Well, yeah, over <laughs> overcompensating. You need an anti-tank weapon that's handheld. Yeah. Um, I think you know. First of all, I appreciate the uh, the introduction. Um, the DVD is actually in stores right now, uh, ViperRecords.com. Um, and I also want to say that, you know, it's interesting to be on this program because a lot of people will approach me and they'll be like, I can't believe you're going to do this show. And I think that there are a lot of perceptions about yourself that um, that people have the wrong idea about. And I'm, I'm more than willing to sit here and have a tempered, relaxed, calm discussion about some of these things because I think that, you know, you're not one of these guys who came out and said the, the whole fascism started with the black guy crowd. You know what I mean? I remember you from the Bush administration days being out there saying, do you realize what's happening here in America? You know, you are looking at it through a right-left paradigm is what you were saying to people. When in reality, it doesn't matter who's going to be there. Whoever comes after Bush is going to have to cross the T's and dot the I's. Well, no, that's, that's it. Exactly it, it, it uh, Cynthia McKinney was on my show about a month ago. She's back on next week, the former congresswoman. You know, for those that I'm sure most viewers know who she is. And she said, look, it's not that Barack Obama's the lesser of two evils. He's the more effective. Mm. It, it, Mitt Romney would have done the exact same thing, but couldn't have gotten away with as much. Mm. And I think that, look, if someone else had been able to be in that position, smiling, and then sending all of these troops and mercenaries back into Iraq, back into Afghanistan, exploiting the natural resources, deporting as many people as he did, which we'll get into later. Um, I think that that would have garnered a lot more hatred if it had happened from a right-wing Republican white guy, as opposed to someone who has the impression of being an incredibly liberal individual and yet follows, you know, a secretive agenda that really doesn't answer to anybody, especially not well, sure. the Sure. We're going to get into globalism and a few things we talked about before you came into the studio here. All I can say is I'm a true independent. I tweeted earlier today and said, you know, two real independents. You're a real independent. You're not controlled. I mean, I think I first met you seven, eight years ago in New York, mm -hmm. uh, and I've had a chance to be at a few of your events, and you've been there at a showing of Endgame. And I just respect the fact that I agree with about 85% of what you stand for, and I probably agree with the other 15 if I fully understood it or had time to follow it all. But most of what I've heard you talk about, I agree with. But you're through a different prism, a different perspective, a different scanner darkly, myself as well. My only issue is this. Whatever the globalists are really pushing, it may have a bunch of good reasons and a cover story associated with it of why it sounds good. But I look at what their internal documents, leaked documents, what the larger end game is. Absolutely. And so I'm like, we can't open borders because the globals want a North American union. They want to implode Mexico under Agenda 21, force everybody off their land in the Maquiladoras, then up here to drive down wages, then to create a culture clash. See, if the system was trying to unify things for everybody to be friends, it'd be different. In the name of, quote, liberalism, mm. they then sell it as a... But, I mean, it would take an hour to break the right. whole thing down. No, no, but we'll get into that. I think the the, the reality is that people often 
uh, misunderstand and misrepresent the mythology of America. For example, the creation of the United States in the fact that when Britain uh, surrendered, it ceded a series of territories that didn't belong to them. When Mexico surrendered to the United States after the Mexican-American War, it ceded a series of territories that did not belong to them. You know, all of these Native American tribes, they weren't ruled solely by Spain. As a matter of fact, Spain couldn't exercise control over them. The Mexican government couldn't exercise control. No, I agree. Right? So, how about those people? But and see, the UN right. will try to represent them and then take over. Right, but this see, is... See, the, but, the, but, the, I mean, what do you do? Because now it's the UN taking over America. And, and then the other part of it becomes from when I hear people talk about who deserves to be here and who doesn't, because I've met people who don't have papers legally, right? And yet they serve their country in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, mind you, that's not a war that I necessarily believe in. But when I hear a bunch but of it's hypocrisy, when I hear about when I hear a bunch of chicken hawks saying, oh, you're not down with America," I look at them and I say, hey, what did you ever do to be considered an American besides fall out of some wretched hole in Kansas or, or New York or Texas? You know, here's a guy who barely speaks the language. And yet he's putting his life on the line for the perceived safety of the United States. Now, regardless of whether you or I agree with the premise of the war he's the paid dues behind it right he's paid his dues no i get that the people if you drink if you're drinking orange juice out there <laughs> if you're wearing uh, uh, clothes that are made out of cotton as opposed to hemp because they had to outlaw that um if you're eating strawberries in the winter blueberries in the winter that doesn't grow in the winter it had to come from plantation like atmospheres you know we've overthrown governments overseas just to keep I agree globalism neocolonialism right. and and it's tied into neoliberalism as well the idea that everything's for sale that the air's for sale that the water's for sale you know these people want to privatize every aspect of human life and i think that you know sometimes the difference is people can't hear me because i say it through hip hop and no matter what the venue is they'll still think hip hop irresponsible, arrogant young people, or they'll hear you say something and they'll say, oh man, I love this guy, but he went crazy on peers and I, I, I don't think that he, you know, should represent the movement that way. At, the, at some point, you and I will only touch a fraction of the people that we need to speak to. And yet I think that what's important about it is to have so many diverse groups of individuals who have the same core message. What's behind the mask? You know what I mean? Don't show me what you have in the right hand when you play the old switch and grab. You know what I mean? This has a trajectory. At some point, we're going to get... And that's what I'm saying. Whatever they're pushing, whatever the establishment wants, you can bet it's not good for the general public. I don't care what color you are. I mean, right. I mean, I mean here's an example. I like the immigrants that I know from Mexico, and they tend to be better family people, not decadent spoiled brat Americans. I don't care what color the spoiled brat American is. We've had it good so long they're spoiled brats. And, and that's an over stereotype, but it, but there's some reality to it. Where there's smoke, there's fire. But then the Mexican government, if I go down there, will shake me down, beat me up, steal my car. I can't move down there and go have a baby paid for at the hospital. I can't get all this stuff free. And then I'm criticized up here by Mexico for how bad I am when Mexico has their most draconian anti-immigrant laws in all of Latin America. I think, see, see, I'm, I'm just sick of always hearing inherently right. that America's bad. What's bad is this imperial, global, corporate, British model that corporations have adopted that is now open source for these elites. Right. I think, though, that what, what needs to happen in that conversation, because, you know, I love to read the criticisms of myself, not only because I find them funny and they're not true, but also because it gives me a chance to debunk these me things. Me too, it's entertaining. When people say to me, oh, Alex Jones, you mean the guy who talks like the micro machine man and puts all these dates and stuff into it? I say, listen, <laughs> if you slow down what he's saying and you look literally one sentence by one sentence, you have two hundred things to research within the span of that. And I think that sometimes what would benefit you is to slow it down and say, hey man, you know what? Today we're just gonna deal with this. No, I agree, but here's the problem. The way my brain works, I think most people's actually work this way, is that is that I love when people start like that. The problem is the way my brain works. Well, well the, the, there's like a hundred different. Mm -hmm. In fact, what people think I'm talking fast, that's like one one hundredth. Right. Because when I see something, I know all the connections, 
and how it integrates because I've read all the establishment publications and then I know the three or see they're thinking like a three level chess the general public's playing checkers right. and they want to keep us in a checkers level and that's what's so frustrating is that I can see their end game. But listen, we talked for about five minutes, you know, right when you got here, mm -hmm. about some of the things we want to talk about, and we're kind of hitting the end of it sure. at the start, but it's going awesome. In the limited time we've got with you, because I know you've got a show to do, let's start with, I said, what do you want to cover first? And you said guns. So I said, hey, grab the 50 cal out of the safe. Uh, so that's why the 50 cal is here on the table, because on your shirt is the AK-47, a mortal technique, uh, since 1492. I get it. We, the indigenous peoples, are seizing, you know, our right to self-determination well, and to be armed. Let's just touch on that. Uh, I always tell people when they come to me, they say, oh, you know, revolution, you have a lot of, uh, of revolutionary figures from Latin America that are from the left wing. I explain to people, our revolution doesn't come with socialism or communism. That's an adverse effect of America's pressure. Originally, we heard the great prognosticator of democracy come down to Latin America at a time when we had a series of horrible imperialist military dictatorships that governments now are trying to resemble, you know, where you know, if you were convicted of raping a woman as a military officer, you could get out of it by agreeing to marry her. The most insane type of laws you could possibly imagine that governed a government. Um, but when we look at that, when people were saying you can have a democracy and you can vote for your own leaders, we thought that's wonderful. What a great idea. And then the great uh, 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 proselytizer of democracy, we realized, was the same one backing up Stroessner, Batista, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the imperialist governments that existed in Latin America. And the country and the people of Latin America said, what else do you have on the table? Who else has something besides and the this? Soviets came. And the Soviets and the Chinese came. And I, I explained to people, yes, that's a natural part of, of our society, but what we have to explain to individuals is we didn't need a European man to come from the 19th century and explain to us dark people in Latin America the complex concept. Of Plus, sharing. anybody from sharing, Europe has, right? or the U.S., no matter what color they are, if, they're, if they've got globalist backing, they're coming with the corporate jackals. They're coming with the economic mm -hmm. hitmen. And so that's the issue. But then you find out that the mega banks, and this isn't a conspiracy, this is on record, funded the communist movement knowing Europe was revolting against the robber barons and the royalty. So they created a new fake grassroots movement that they could control. So it's the same thing with the Soviets going in there. Absolutely. It's like running from Bush to Obama and then running from Obama to uh, uh, Mitt Romney. They're all part of the same thing. So what do you say for America and Latin America and the world? What is, uh, what is at your core, a moral technique, tech, what is at the core of your belief, studying this so long, being an articulate, smart guy who's been around the world, f from your historical research, then what system do you like? Because, look, you've got Peter Thiel, the big B Bilderberg guy, trying to take over the libertarian movement right now mm. and turning it into a fake privatization tyranny. How do you beat something that metastasizes and like the thing turns into whatever you run to. Like, like, like you run to one system and it's real at first, but when you turn around, the thing grabs it, absorbs it, and then you, know, you turn around and you, it looks like what you thought it was, but it isn't. Someone once told me that Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all of these religions expanded specifically because they fell into the hands of lesser men. If they had been run by the original people who conceptualized the ideology and who for some reason had it close to their heart and veins. You know, do you think Jesus Christ would look at the way that people have commercialized his religion? Do you think Yeshua ben Yosef would be able to, to look at it without shedding a tear and saying, you've missed the basic premise of everything that I'm trying to tell you, which is treat other people the way you want to be treated. You know, if I came back, I would be a Mexican born in a manger. You know what I mean? In a, in, a, in a hoopty, you know, on occupied territory that was stolen during a war that people started purposefully because they knew they could goad an idiot like Santa Ana into attacking and then reach around with different forces, pull the, crew, pull the uh, entire Navy up to Veracruz and then Los Angeles. What would he say about that? He would be born into a society that he had no technical human rights in, similar to the way the Hebrews were treated sure. in Rome. Now, when you discuss all of these issues that are going on in the world, I think what people don't do is they don't connect the actual history to it. When 
and I think that's where I, I try to uh, implement that to them when I, when, or implement those ideas when I say, hey, listen, if you look at the history of Russia and the quote unquote USSR bringing freedom, did they bring freedom to Eastern Europe? No, they, they brought they, mass murder and death. You have to understand, they did the same thing to Eastern Europe that America did to Central America and to the Caribbean. They colonized right. it. Colonized it, took it over, and said, you know what, we're going to make you dependent on us, to the point that they can still shut off the gas in the Ukraine five years ago. Oh, do you have a problem? There you go. What's your problem now? Oh, you have an issue with me and something I'm saying? Cool. You know, I'm going to put polonium in a pellet, and I'm going to put it into your body, and you're going to die of cancer a, a, a week later. Don't toy with me. Don't play with me. You know, they give specific examples of people, and the CIA was complicit in the killing of an archbishop of the Catholic Church, Romero, in El Salvador. And yet, even though he was made a saint, there's no Im gigantic backlash against the government and against them being there in present day times because they've forgotten that history. And I think when you remind them of that and you show them this is the blueprint, in the same way that you point out historical facts from a, 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 a timeline for people, you know, when you speak to them in plain language and you say, hey, listen, this is real. This actually happened. This is not a fraud. You know, this is not a conspiracy. When people talk to me about 9-11 and they say, hey, you know, how, how can you not believe the government story? And I always say, listen, I am not sitting here saying that I know exactly what happened. But you know what? I will say this much. I cannot believe the government because they couldn't tell the truth about the air to breathe to people. That's the simplest thing in the world. That's it. If they've been caught lying over and over and over again and caught doing false flags, you've got right. to question it. But, but. Breaking that down, sure, you've had colonial powers, and the British had the most successful model, so it's been adopted by the corporations. And you know, I mean, reinforced with religion, reinforced with neoliberalism now, reinforced. Sure, well, that's with their the cover. Right. I mean, it's like giving Obama a peace prize. But what I'm saying is, now they put out that Dinesh D'Souza film, and I interviewed him, and he's saying Obama is anti-colonialist. That's why he's doing all this stuff, and it's the opposite. Obama has a CIA cover as an anti-colonialist, but clearly uh, his job is to bring in global corporate colonialism that's so powerful now, the banks are above the law, they issue the money, and they're going to dissolve the countries and even the old empires into one global empire. And then what's its ideology? You know, other empires were domination, total control, but most empires, unless it was Hitler, uh, and what he tried to establish that the Neo-Germanic Empire did not want to exterminate everybody. That had been done some with the natives in some of the areas, but this is a eugenics-based exterminism, which isn't fair to say ultra-Hitlerian because Hitler got his ideas from these people. So how do you talk to the left, the right, the, you know, the people that are into native rights, people that are UN but, stuff, when all of it's a projection of a global corporate takeover? Because they have these ideas based on mainstream media about who we're fighting against. You know, for example, if you tell the average American we're not at war with radical Islam, they think you're crazy. They say, oh, no, we're not at war with communism. They think you're insane until you say, hey, wait a minute, we're not at war with radical Islam because who's our biggest ally in the region? Saudi Arabia. Their brand of Wahhabism is like the Taliban with money. And they have the influence to interfere in Syria. They have their I was going to say. They, they have their little. Their little how does the left put up with right, it? Right, yeah. right, then what about communism? When they say, oh, you're, we're not against communism. Oh, how could you say that? Who's our biggest economic partner? China. For China. So you know who we're really at war with? And I tell people all the time. We're at war with people that say no to us, no to the agenda of the people who run wow. behind guns. mafia. That's technically how it is. I mean, if we don't give access to natural resources as a third world entity, we find ourselves on a hit list. You know, you find yourself being persecuted, being brought down. If you try to be sovereign. It doesn't matter if you're a communist government. Or it doesn't matter if you are a capitalist entity that just wants a little more of the slice. They'll portray you, one, as a Stalinist, or two, they'll portray you as a kleptocracy. When in reality, who were you stealing money for? 
You. We just didn't want to cut you in anymore because you felt like, as wow. America, you weren't doing enough to get your slice. The same way people were ignorant about France and Iraq when they said, oh, the French are soft. We're going to eat freedom fries. I'm like, the French are war masters. They've been involved in every major battle in the world since they had it out with Attila the Hun. I mean, I think. And then once we took it over, they got that oil. Well, the only thing was this. When Sykes Pico, which you know you're, you're an intelligent man, but for people that don't know out there, uh, Sykes Pico was a treaty that was signed before World War One, where they decided to carve up the Middle East. France's slice was Lebanon and Syria. England's slice was Iraq and and, and Egypt and all the rest of that. When it came down to it, the French were like. Dude, that's not my problem. America, you inherited that issue. No, that's right. And now Go who's behind it. Libya, who's behind Syria, their slice, it was France, because uh, it's next door to Tunisia. You're absolutely right. And, and see, you've and done your research. the UN as their little, like the UN is all of a sudden there to save them from Gaddafi as if he wasn't used by them for their purposes before. Well, see, that's what's so refreshing is that you've actually done research when, when, when even 95% of people that think they're research don't know all this. That is what is so frustrating, is that they put Obama in. Webster Tarpley predicted all this in the Obama deception four and a half years ago. He said they're going to attack Africa. They're going to put in Afrikan. He named all the countries. They're going to take out Gaddafi. Uh, because Say that again for the people. Who was that guy? That, that Webster Tarpley. Webster Tarpley. You see, that's what I mean. Just, just, that's how hip-hop is. Slow the record down. Bring it back. Just, just. Webster Tarpley. Go look that up, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there. Well, exactly. But, I mean, he laid it all out. We knew it was going to happen. And, and it's so diabolical that they're carrying extermination operations all over Africa. Uh, they've been for 25 months attacking Syria, killing the Muslim minorities, killing the Christians, blowing up mosques, churches. And then, the, and then you read the New York Times, it'll say, more car bombs. They call for Assad to leave and never even in the article say Western-backed rebels did it. It implies Assad did it. I mean, the, how does the so-called left get behind putting al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria run by Saudi Arabia? Well, the same way that they don't uh, go into outrage when they find out that an entity like HSBC was caught out there laundering money for splinter cells of al-Qaeda. In other words, people that are out there dedicating to killing Americans, whether or not it's a, it's a fake op or not, people really are Wells dying. Fargo troops, laundering the drug money. Troops are dying out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can talk to American families at home that don't have their mom or dad or uncle or brother coming home. People are dying. And HSBC, who some of you are going to, who unfortunately I still have a small amount of money in, which I'm going to pull out when I get home, after I read these articles, I look at this and I say to myself, these people did this and they got a $2 billion fine, which for them, and it's the equivalent of you and me taking a penny out of our pocket and throwing it on the table. Well, I mean, it's the same thing when they caught three years ago, over two years before, this is five years ago, but in two years, $378 billion. Guys, pull up $378 billion drug money. Uh, laundered by uh, Wachovia, Wells Fargo, and they got a $111 million fine. We did the math. What's $111 million out of $378 billion? I mean, it's something like if I robbed a bank and had a million dollars, the cops came and I gave them $3,000. And so the issue is they have created al-Qaeda to control the real Arab fervor who's been wronged so they can control the opposition and then the low-level al-Qaeda doesn't even know they're globalists, but the high-level guys are CIA, MI6, Mossad, uh, Pakistani intelligence, and that's how they control the whole thing and have the pretext to invade. Before, without making it as complicated as that, for the people that are at home watching, it's the old premise of them telling you, you know what, we're locking up the little drug dealers to get the big guy. No, you're not. You want to get the big guy so that he can rat out all the little guys and all of them can go to jail because they justify this system for him. The big drug dealer, he's not going to go to jail. He's the one with the $2 million lawyer. You're the fool on the ground, the zealot, the pack flipper, the crack seller whose lifestyle is glorified in music, and yet... You're not getting the benefits of this gigantic, you know, chemical drug industry. That Look exists. at the opium production. Right. Who's it, getting that paper? Ten percent of you. world production in 2001 was in Afghanistan. Now it's 93. It's insane. And, and, and when they get caught, they have the troops growing it and go, yeah, we grow it. Hide the elephant in the room, move on. But specifically, Second Amendment, uh, tell me where you stand on that. You're never going to ban guns in this country. 
You know what I mean? I mean, you can read the Dick Act of 1902. I mean, we're talking about it being against the Constitution for them to do that. Did, did people misuse this as a tool? Yes. You know, did someone try to blow themselves up on a plane? Yes. Uh, whether it was a shoe bomber or a, f a guy with a grenade strapped to his underwear, we all have to go through uh, a screening now because of that. And do I agree with people being screened and having to take, like, mental, to have some sort of mental capacity to own a weapon like this? Yes, absolutely. However, I always tell people that before we get into an alarmist position, if the government wants to attack you, for example, people in New York, I tell them, they don't have to take away your guns. They can just turn the water off. Can the average person in New York drink out of the Hudson? Can they drink out of the East River? No. They control every other resource about your life. And that's why they want you so dependent. Guns are kind of the vestigial sign of one of the last freedoms we've got, and I could go to the issues of... No, no, the, no. The also, my, uh, not to interrupt you, my big shout-out to, to my friend, uh, Dave Gomez, uh, Chief Warrant Officer. We had this conversation, and I said, you know, what good would, you know, light arms like an AR-15 be against a division of heavily armored troops that came in? Like, in other words, what good would your peace shooters be? And he said to me, it's working really well for those people in Afghanistan. They don't have advanced weaponry. It's the willingness to die. It's the willingness, willingness to resist. Look how frightened they were of a guy like Chris Dorner. One man, regardless of whether you or I think that story is true or the public does, one man, he wasn't armed with bazookas and tanks. The police were so scared they shot up multiple innocent people, uh, were hyperventilating in fear, and then said, we're going to burn it down, burned it down, right? and then told us you, you didn't hear that. And, and anyone that would dare to question whether the government was corrupt or not, or whether his position was right, is automatically painted as if they support murder, right? The reality is this. When you kill someone without due process, that's murder. The cops basically went in there and murdered him. Did he murder people? Absolutely. Was he wrong for that? Yes. Did they want him alive? No. Because if they got him alive and he stood trial, I think it would have been the end of it. I think that people would have been like, are you kidding me? Is this guy about to blow the lid on how fascist this system has become, on how people have been trained to think this way? And I know we always talk about Nazi Germany. But the Germans were not animals, Alex. They were human beings. They were conditioned. You know, when you read the stories of the SS officers that were given a puppy, you know what I mean, to have during their time in the academy. And they had to kill it. And the last order is shoot the puppy in the head. Unflinching, absolute loyalty, unquestioning to what they think is the republic, to what they think is what is supposed to be the. And it was world. done by increments, just like we become so evil by increment, a little bit more, a little bit more, right. rationalize, give into it, and pretty soon. Which is why I was happy to hear um, you clarify that stance on immigration, because I always tell people if they're going to come at people. Who do you think they're going to test it on? People that you already think are, uh, if your position... Yeah, but I went with there. Jesse Ventura where they've got the immigrants illegally locked up, and I've called right. for that not to happen. Right, but no, 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 but I'm just saying, I'm glad you clarified that. But you have to, it's two-way street. They're going to use the immigrants right. in their liberation theology control system as another weapon. You understand the globalists play no, all no, sides. But liberation, even liberation theology, if you want to talk about it, is the idea that it's a per, it's a it's an idea that was taken from a, a real no 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 I know I know so I just said the thing and then turned the over. thing right no no I right. understand Whatever that they run to they take it over it's like uh, but I think that's that's the nature of a corporation when people talk to me about Illuminati and they say oh Illuminati is so scary I said you don't have to use uh, hypotheticals you want to talk about people behind closed doors who make decisions about your life and what they're going to sell you that may be killing you that's Walmart that's you know. Honeywell next door. These people that are here that will say, we're going to make these decisions. You have no power over it. We can hide behind the fact that we're a person and a corporation, even though we technically can't go to prison. Yeah, it's McDonald's down the street. It's, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's Burger King horse meat. You know what I mean? It's, it's, and horse meat's nothing. They've got us so worried about horse meat 
And then meanwhile, they've got bromine in the Gatorade, uh, baby parts in the Pepsi. Right. And, and, and that's the thing about Bayer. You know, it came out of, about a decade ago that for 11 years, they knowingly put HIV and hepatitis in millions of ampules of factor eight, killing hundreds of thousands of hemophiliacs. And it came out in the trials, because France was one of that had trials about it, because it was a worldwide corporation. They actually said, well, these are infirm people, get rid of them anyways. It wasn't just we're cold-blooded and going to sell people something that kills them, we don't care. It's more than that. It's more than that. Right. But they the, get off on it. The people, the people who run this society, they present themselves as moral leaders. They present themselves as if, you know what, in my family, you know, we would never do what these ordinary plebeians are doing out in the street, when in fact they're the most perverse out of anybody. Well, no, that's the psyop. Hide. That's why that's I have to wear this to get people to even pay more attention, but this is a uniform. And then you wear this uniform and you look like the uniform, then people actually listen to you, but that's the whole deal. The men that dress like this don't do anything wrong. The truth is right. it's the guys that dress like this are doing almost all the bad stuff. Right, and, and, and I always tell people, when you see somebody selling their body for money in the street, it's obvious. They're, they're showcasing themselves. The, the prostitution is, is, a, is a visible it's aspect. Flaunted. When someone sells their soul for money, how obvious is that? Because it happens every single day as much as people who sell their bodies. And that's why and they do more harm to American citizens. The, and they do yeah. more harm to human beings than anybody else. And that's why they want to make everybody poor is so we'll sell out to them. Right. They don't want us being independent. Amazing information. Uh, I wanted to get, uh, I mean, behind the scenes, though, you said they'll never get rid of the guns. You said that on air. But I mean, bottom line, you also talked about drones. My point is this gun's been used in one crime to rob an armored car. Right. Not, not this gun, but one back in the 80s. The Barrett 50 cal, okay. Why would you need a Barrett in case you send drones to my house? Yeah, that was the point you made. I wanted you to repeat, but but it's larger than that. Right. It's a I real it. symbol of freedom, and 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 you make the joke about overcompensating for something. This was so two man teams, one to spot, as as you know, we're saying off air, and then one to you know deal with 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 light armor. Now, this is a anti armor weapon. We were shooting through quarter inch pieces of steel two you days ago. Take down with a it. plane with this gun. Uh, but but. But but you could also, you know, do all sorts of things just with a can of gasoline. The issue is it isn't about the can of gasoline or the truck or the gun. It is about the mindset, and more of these guns out there makes it a freer society. Can, can I offer something? Regard, I mean, I understand your point, and we can. That's a perfectly debatable issue. I know people that would disagree or agree with that as well. But I can offer another rationale. Instead of blaming guns, right, for all the violence in America like people are trying to do now, instead of blaming video games like they're trying to do in Congress or, or, or violent movies, right, how about the fact that this country, this republic, was born in has, blood. has only had 20 years of peace since its inception. Now, I would like to be able to blame this or blame something else, but I think that that's a very nearsighted solution. Just to look at it, yes, this No, does, we have a history of this piracy. Does, this does kill people, yes, absolutely. But so did Greek fire. So did a whole lot of other things that people invented and used. So did diseases that were given Smallpox. to indigenous people purposefully. One of the first examples of genetic warfare against indigenous people by Europeans. That's in the British manual. And I think, that, thank you for pointing that out, because this is the point that I'm trying to make. We won't have that critical discussion about how violent our government is and how violent our society is. Blaming it on this is the easiest way out. It, it, it prevents you from looking inward and saying, what have I become complicit to in America? Well, let me say this, because what you say is absolutely on target, but here's the paradox. The United States was the giant, one of the last true freebooting, uh, you know, pirating, piratical, absolute, all you know, bets are off craziness, where you had all the different native tribes trying to get this tribe to fight with that tribe, and the French, and the Spanish, and the, and the British, and the, and the militias, and really it was a free-for-all, and all, if you really look at it, a lot of the groups using the same tactics, but the issue is, is that it was in that age, it was in that time, and if you look at that, there was a lot of murder and death, but it produced incredible wealth. Look at Europe, though. Even more people actually killed by governments and killed by the church and killed by other things, but it was the stagnation. So I'm not saying any of the evil in our history is a good thing or writing it off. I'm saying 
the quieter evil has gone on in China and in Japan, where if a samurai wanted to test out a, a, a sword, he would just chop up a few of his servants, and that was seen as okay. And I'm not attacking the Japanese either. My point is, is that the history has been skewed and twisted, not to demonize America, not to defend America, but to really not show people what really went on. And I don't even know what the point is, other than that why did, because there's other empires, why did 5% of the world population end up getting half the wealth? Now that's all ending. And, and I think it was because there was that absolute out of control behavior going on where the central powers weren't in control. It allowed more creativity and people to do what they wanted, separating that from all the killing and violence. Right. I think one thing that people need to realize is empires don't fall apart because they lose wars. We haven't won a war since World War II. You know, we didn't win in Vietnam. I know Korean War veterans that schooled me to the game, and even though I, I, I'm not a huge fan of war, I always thank people for their service, because at least they had the courage to go, uh, excuse my language, rather than the people who got 1,200 deferments and have no problem sending young Sure, you can respect the individual for what they right. went through. But I, I think what the point is that, you know, empires begin to die when people no longer believe in them. I mean, the, the partial collapse of the Soviet Union was due to the massive amount of cynicism that existed because the, the, said, the government was no longer believable outside of Moscow. In other words, the people that were living in this Siddhartha-like enclosement were like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, the free Soviet Union. Like Ceausescu. Right. And then everybody outside was like, are you kidding me? You don't even have on paper what is going on here. Do you realize what's happening in Poland? Do you realize what's happening in Eastern Europe, in Romania, and all these other places? Do you have any clue? I mean, would you even be able to last for a day there without losing your mind? And I think that that's where we're at right now. The wow. level of cynicism in this country has gotten to the point where people are saying, is there hope left for the republic? Can we save it? Is it worth saving? And how did we start with this? You know what I mean? And I think the only way we can is, the only way you can stop being an alcoholic, Alex, is to admit you have a problem with alcohol. The, I agree. The only place you, way you can stop being a drug addict is to admit you have a problem with drugs. America needs to confront its mythology. And in the mythology of its inception, the mythology of what it was used for, and I think what hurts uh, 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 Second Amendment um, proponents are when they deny certain aspects of what the Second Amendment was used for. Was it used to police slaves? Absolutely. Because no one becomes a slave quietly. Do you think the Romans enslaved the Greeks quietly? No. They had, they, arms. they had a man called... But again, you can't blame the weapon. You have to blame the culture and the time. And that's where people have that escape. But let me go one further without, with the without, whole... Without let me go further, the though, the whole uh, weapon thing. Did you know, because I kind of got into naval history and it's the actual charts, you, you had indentured servitude... Mm -hmm. and, and you had the sharecroppers that were basically slaves as well. And, and you had the slaves all over Europe that didn't get freed in Germany, in some cases, until the 1860s. You know, there were slaves in Germany. Absolutely. You know, the Hessians, they brought over here to fight us? Yes, absolutely. We're the, so Hessians, the Hessians, they brought 17,000. The Duke of Hesse had a treaty with, uh, with the king, and they said, oh, bring them down. Those are the first German settlements in New York. Exactly. But that was a great brainwashing tool, because these were slaves that, were, that owed blood debt to be a soldier. Right. But they were so into it, they were happy to go die. But they kind of said, hey, this looks pretty good. I'm going to stay here. Right. And ran off. But and when, the, they, when they lost, the, 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 it was funny because they said 9,000 9, single German men were like, dude, I do not want to go back to Germany. I love it out here. You know what I mean? I can live with indigenous people, beautiful women. I'm treated like a person. I'm not treated like, like some part of feudal history. And I think what people don't tend to understand is that Europe has plenty of uh, indigenous societies as well. If you look at the Celts, if you look at the Picts, if you look at, for example, the history between Ireland and England. Oh, it's all the same story. They're, they're trying. Same to, thing that happened here. They're trying to. That's make why them the West was so human. good at it, right. was they'd already done it to themselves. But, but that's what I'm trying to get at. I don't bring up other forms of slavery to take away from the African Absolutely. slave trade right. and the stuff that went on with uh, the natives and, and the sugar canes, because that was some of the most oppressive, because the science had gotten better. My issue is it's used as a way to make people feel bad and have an inferiority complex that their ancestors were slaves. I try to bring up all the other slavery right. and the impressment onto ships and stuff of, of poor course. whites. That was slavery. No, 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 yeah. And, and listen, yeah, did you know that on average, from like 1,600 to 1,800, on average, about a third of the people would die on each mission Absolutely. to the African slave coast? It wasn't just the Gold Coast blacks, half of them dying on the ship. 
-hmm. It was the sailors. That's why you had so many pirates. That was the first ships where it was all black, white, his, you know, his, you know, Latin, all that on one ship. That's why they say pirates were the first libertarians. <laughs> is that if you really study history, they were all running off because two missions, you were dead. Right. But my point is people don't get how hard the world was. If you smarted off to somebody, they'd say, we're going to the street with a gun or a knife. I mean, it was, you know, it's, it was, it, what I'm saying is, it was so hard is what I'm ranting about. I think what people mistake is that in America, the, the crux of Western civilization, even the medieval monarchies, are based off of Rome, right? They are, yeah. And when people look at Rome, they tend to think, oh, wow, it's just like America with these shining buildings and establishments. You forget the organized barbarity of it all. And it was based on slaves in 50 countries. This is a society of complete imperialism where one man was considered God, you know what I mean? And he, his rule was absolute. The emperor, you know, dictated something and it happened regardless of what the people wanted. The Senate was there for show during the end of antiquity and the beginning of wow. the Roman Empire. And I think that that's what people don't seem to understand. We live in a society now where the idea of checks and balances is practically for show and it works on a local level. But once we get to a, a, a mainstream government, I agree. it's entirely built on- Freedom is ceremonial. Right. And that veneer's wearing out. We've got to go to break now. I heard, because they told me, blame it on them, hey, he's got this film coming out. I didn't know it was already out. I saw the trailer uh, before we went on air tonight. Sure. Uh, tell us about this work. Sure. Tell us about where people can get it. Also, the new album. We're going to play the trailer for the film. Sure. And then we're going to come back. We're almost out of time. Do about 10, 15 uh, more minutes with tech, Immortal Technique. Give out the website when we come back. People can find out where your shows are. I mean, i got to say this. Um, I have interviewed quite a few hip-hop people. And I'm not kissing your ass. I think it's true. You are undoubtedly the most informed uh, person of anybody I've talked to by light years. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, Karis one, very informed, super smart guy. I'd say number two there. And, and I'm not saying, oh, wow, within hip hop, boy, you're really smart. I mean, you've, uh, you know, are yeah. up there with, uh, you know, the, the brain bug, uh, Webster well, Tarpley. Well, That's his nickname. <laughs> well, at least you didn't say he speaks so well. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Obama? I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, the Harry Reid thing. Where he's yeah, like, oh, we were right. talking about how, because that's what you want to talk about. In fact, when we come back, liberals and the condescension oh, right. and what they're doing. No, no, my point is, is that I wish in hip hop, you know, that uh, there was more of this. There are a lot of people who think the way I think, Alex, it's just not conducive to the entertainment business for them. I'm going to write that. a note here. Yeah. I'm going to tell secrets of entertainment, I've been told by two different people that were high up at MTV, that ties into what you just said when we come back. But tell folks about the uh, new uh, DVD, the new film. Um, new movie directed by my friend Carrie Stewart, um, The Revolution of Immortal Technique, talks about um, basically being an independent, coming up and learning the business and realizing that, listen, I can be successful at all this, but unless I'm willing to personally sacrifice for the message that I want to put out, and I want to put art before selling out for money, you know, what are the pros and the cons of that? And all the people wow. that have advised me. How long has this been out? Uh, it's been about a year, and it was six years in the making. It was a to show my ignorance. I follow it, some of what you do, a, but was, I guess was, I just was, I missed it. No, it was a sleeper. You know what I mean? It was it was it was a great great film. We got a uh, Cornell West. You know, one of the only black intellectuals that I think has really taken the Obama administration to task. And he he famously uh, told the MSNBC hosts that you've sold your soul for White House access. I want you know him on. I mean? You know, Cornell West needs to be on the show. He's someone who's willing to tell the president, you know, when are you going to come from behind some of the proxies? and have an honest discussion about what's going on in your own hometown of Chicago. Hey, did you what bring copies so I can watch this tonight? Uh, yeah, we should have one. We'll, uh, we'll send one. Oh, but I saw the trailer earlier. Well, well, let's play the trailer for folks right now. Tell them the website where people can get it. Viperrecords.com or hit me up at, at Immortal Tech on Twitter. Okay, let's go to that trailer right now. You symbolize the voice of truth all around the world in the name of rap music and hip-hop. If I was somewhere else simply because of the music I made, then there was nowhere it couldn't take me. Can I have a platform where I can still be me, tell my truth, and make some money so I can take care of my life? There's a reason a nigga picks his head up. Moral Technique is one of the most dangerous artists in America. We moved 
to Harlem in the 80s. I used to get into fights all the time. I didn't realize what the prison industrial complex was. When I began to learn and understand things about the world, I was set free. Whenever you got awakened, you took this journey. Fuck, man. I'm glad you did it. I'm nobody's puppet. I control me. Repeat after me. Viva la revolution! Viva la revolution! Viva la revolution! The revolution of immortal technique. Wow. And when he talks about, you know, up with the revolution, it's not a communist revolution. It's not a socialist revolution. It's not a fascist right wing, left wing resolution, uh, uh, revolution. It is, I guess, a revolution of awakening and to be independent. I haven't seen the film yet, but I, in, I intend to. Uh, bummed out that it's been out for a while and haven't seen it. Plus, I'm a free market guy. I probably want to carry it and sell it at the InfoWars shop. Dot com. That's how we finance ourselves here with viewers like you that support us and your subscriptions to InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, and don't forget, I print the magazine, 100000 each month at cost in groups of 10 up to 100. And the February issue is almost sold out, and that's good because February is almost over. And it gets into the attack on the Second Amendment and why the tyrants want your guns and the whole socioeconomic breakdown on Agenda 21. It looks like a... Uh, Mortal Technique shirt, but it's uh, the right to keep my arms shall not be infringed. Come and take it. Poster inside. Get those at InfoWarsStore.com. Pro Pure Water Filters discounted. Uh, all of it. It is so incredibly uh, important for us to do that. And at the end of the uh, broadcast here in a moment, we'll also show you up on screen uh, the uh, website for Mortal Technique. Now, Tech, we got to move quick. I'm going to try to ask my questions and shut up because I agree with so much of what you're saying, and it's, it's exciting you know, to have these uh, ideas bubbling back and forth, but I want to run through as much of the other points because you covered four or five. There's like eight more left here that we talked about before tonight's show uh, because this is stuff you brought up mainly, uh, but uh, you raised the point about how people sell their souls and how in hip-hop and rap and rock and roll, why is it all such a destructive anti-family, anti-body, anti-God, anti-liberty message? Uh, why did MTV for three years push Marilyn Manson when nobody wanted to hear it? It was because it was a message the system wanted heard to control the message because if you are awake and focused and centered, you'll see the tyranny and resist against it. But let me tell you the story I was told by a former executive inside MTV and a, normal, and a huge uh, rock and roll star. I'll just say that. It's not Dave Mustaine. It's not some of the other guys that have been on. So I'll just leave it. I mean, it's, it's huge. Your household name. They were there in the mid-90s when the decision was made that this hip-hop and rap's getting really popular, rap. was it called hip-hop then. And we want it to be gangster and destructive. Uh, I and, saw that memo going around, yeah. Oh, you, you saw the memo? Yeah, they have a memo that's on the Internet right now, not to interrupt you, where that is actually sent out. Um, and they don't have the person's name attached to it. They don't have anything. But there's a memo that floats around the industry that discusses that. I tell people, listen... Entertainment can be used for several different things. This is entertainment, yet you're using entertainment to inform people. You can use entertainment to pacify people, to placate them, to fool them, to keep them so focused on this that they don't understand you're taking this. For example, what would the United States be without the World Series, without the Super Bowl, without the NBA Finals? Those Roman Coliseums. And it's empty. Joy, those Roman, and I'm not saying, I love basketball. I love football. How could you be, I mean, everybody that I've met here from Texas loves football. By the way, uh, New York Giants, greatest football team of all time. But uh, the, 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 um, the point that I'm trying to make is, I love these sports, but at the same time, you know, it's the, way, fake. the way that they're controlled and the way that they're put out there is exactly That's not our real culture. So what is our culture? So let me go back, because I want you to speak on this. But just to finish, so you say, oh, there's a memo. Okay, well, I can confirm with a high-level former MTV guy who's successful now doing other things and a major rock star, that they were told this was going to go on and what was going to happen in these meetings. So what I'm saying is that is just backs up what you were saying. And then that ties into, you know a lot of the Republicans are racist or tribal or are using it at least, but with Democrats, from my real research, 
they were the party of the Klan. They were the party of the South. They were all the, they couldn't win. And so Margaret Sanger and the Rockefellers, and I've got their memos, those are public, those are in the Library of Congress, they said, we're going to pose as liberals, we're going to hire the black leaders, we're going to kill these weeds. I don't think black people are weeds. Not because I'm some uh, bleeding heart person. I, I don't want any people being treated like slaves, because I know we're all humans, and it all comes back on us. So, so I've said that. Your take on the Nancy Pelosi's, the Harry Reid's, the neoliberals, because from my research, they know they're not liberals. These people are hard. You want the real racist? You want the, because Republicans will just use it for control. You want the real racist? They're, look at how they use both sides. Um, I think that what people don't realize is that when you use code language to talk about people, you know what I mean? And when you play the holier than thou card and I'm a good Christian soul. The, the pathos, the ethos of the argument doesn't equal up, which is why Republicans look like hypocrites. The problem is that people don't examine the, 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 actual, um, <laughs> the actual end result of some of the policies of Democrats at that specific time. You know what I mean? I think, for example, Obama gets a huge pass. Like, I always, I wanted to ask him this. I really hope when he, when he gets out of office, I say to him, you know what? I saw you on TV shed tears for children from Sandy Hook. Totally fake. Bef without, without even that, without injecting that sure. trill into the conversation, I want to ask him, how many tears have you ever shed for the children of Pakistan, for the children of Yemen, for the children of Gaza, whose drones and planes sponsored by America fly over and kill them? Have you shed one tear for them? You know what I mean? Have you said one prayer in your pri private quiet time? Because if you have, I've never heard it. And maybe you don't think it's popular enough to do, but it's necessary. Two, I think that when you talk about a liberal bias or when you talk about any of these aspects of society, you can frame it in whatever way you want to, right? But if you are still controlled by the people economically, it doesn't matter what you claim to be. In other words, if I say I'm a martial artist, Alex, and yet some guy comes in and lays me out with one punch, I don't know a simple block, I'm not a martial artist. If I claim, oh yeah, you know, I'm a doctor, you are eating something, you start choking, I can't even perform the Heimlich. I'm not a doctor, I'm a fraud. Most of these people that are out there that permeate this sort of idea that they're some bleeding heart, I don't see them on the front lines of this stuff. I don't see them willing to get their hands dirty. They're like Pontius Pilate. This isn't my problem. You know, in the same way that we look at it and we say, oh, America came to the rescue of Jewish people in, in World War II. No, you didn't. You sent the St. Louis back. That's what you did. You know what I mean? Don't sit here and recreate a lie. Our, our elite funded Hitler. We, we have a guy that we have uh, commemorated called Christopher Columbus, right? And I always tell Catholics and Italians, you can find somebody better from the Catholic Church, even though, in my mind, the, the, the institution itself is corrupt. You can find somebody like a, a bishop. Mother Teresa. Some, anybody who's a better example. Italians, you can find a mother who sells pizza in Brooklyn right now, who's a better example of an Italian-American than Christopher Columbus, who never even touched America, and who was prostituting eight- and nine-year-old girls. Eight- and nine-year-old indigenous women. That should break the heart of every parent who's watching this program right now. You know, if we don't confront that... But see, it's the dehumanization. Uh, it, it's, it's just like Obama decided to flip the switch and cry for the Sandy Hook because it was an agenda... Uh, but they will never personalize the kids killed by drones or the million-plus Iraqis because it all is a big, cold-blooded show, and it's all about how they're punching our buttons, and then they're basically dehumanizing the whole of humanity. You're absolutely Let me right. Let ask you something. Um, I know that it, you are a, a supporter of Israel um, to a certain degree. Uh, what, so, or at least someone's told me that. I, I don't know if that's true. What do you think about... The, the, the way that Palestinians are disenfranchised of their human rights. Is, that has, that's not, we're not with the Newt Gingrich crowd here that they're an, an, an invented people. Because when he said that, I was like, what are Americans? You know what I mean? A collective of European people that didn't want to be ruled. No, I mean, clearly the king. people that got kicked out of that area of Israel or Palestine are Palestinians. The people that lived in Palestine. Yes. So, so it's I, like I think, I think there's there's sometimes. Well, listen, listen, that's all a misrepresentation. Right. Just like at the start of the interview, 
they take like a 15 year old clip right uh, out of context where I'm saying I said now from the perspective though the UN is against Israel they're playing both sides so then from that perspective I and you watch people will cut this out right. I said I support the state of Israel's right to exist and then I went on to say, but I don't support what they're doing. Right. Now, that was like 14, 15 years ago. But I guess in like 1998, so 14, right. 15 years ago. Because I always thought to myself. I, but had you seen that clip? No, no. Someone had played it for me, for, played an excerpt of it, which is why I wanted to ask. Yeah, see, people like to play audio. But, I, but, I but that's the point. I, want, I, wanted to I actually say, like the video because I'm about <laughs> 60 pounds lighter. <laughs> I, I, no, but let's go back here for sure, just a minute. Sure, sure. Where I stand is talking about Israel helping create fake al-Qaeda, uh, al Israel manipulating our internal politics. Uh, Israel attacking the USS Liberty. I've made films about it. I've criticized it. But there's a cult of people that then make everything about Israel right. and only about Israel. Right. And so they edit things and change things. And, you know, they've got me saying kill black people online, but I didn't say that. Right. So so a lot of that is notice you were shown audio, right? Right, right, right. Not now. He was no, editing. No, but that's why I'm here. Yeah, talking yeah. To you but so, so. What they do is they, uh, listen, I've gone, hey, not everybody that does the El Diablo is worshiping the devil. Right. In Italy, this is the war off evil. Right. Well, they take that still and say, Alex said he worshiped Satan with a mortal technique. And, and, and uh, well, but, but see, I'm, I'm telling you, it's major right. deception. Just like people say about you, you're a communist. Right. Uh, and, well, and, I mean, I think that communism and socialism are a natural part of human development, whether you choose no, to No, I know, but, but, but I'm saying yeah, is there's a massive amount of, of disinformation right. out there. And no matter how many times I say I don't support a lot of what Israel's doing, they spin that and say that means unconditional support for Israel. That's not what's happening. Right. I'm not, no, I know it's a colonial operation. The point is... And I've said that in the news. No one ever quotes that. They take a 14-year-old thing out of context and twist it. So I say, let them have it. Right. You know, they say I'm a Jewish agent. I'm Jewish. Not true, but hey, okay. They say I'm a reptoid. Uh, you know, they say. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my whole deal is you bet I am. They also say I'm KGB. You bet I am. Oh, God. No, actually, I'm a guy who loves liberty right. and justice, who's really trying to figure it all out. Well, I, but when people have always tried to pull the Marxist card with me, I've said, you know what, the difference is between you and me is I've actually read that book because I had to study it to understand how, pretty much, sophisticated. how much control I've read people it too. wanted over a society. And when I was done with that, I said to myself, wow, it reminds me, and you mentioned it before, the great KRS-One who said, there's no such thing as a government. It's just people who rule over other people. And they design these little fancy systems so it looks like they're bringing freedom or they're bringing order. And America, the sad part is we are so cynical right now that I know people who are lovers of democracy that say, I'd rather see a king that could get something done and balance a budget than a president that can't do anything. The system and makes it worse and, and worse. And that's where they want us to be. Here's the key. I'm going to look right in the camera and say this right here. Here's the key to all of this, that, well, just what he just said. The system is running this. We don't blame it all on them, but 90% of it is the way things are ordered. Humans are unlimitedly productive and incredible. History's shown that. And the system is doing almost all of this. And then it says, oh, look at what happened. Give me more power. And then it gets worse and worse. That's the key. Right. And I think that that gets lost in the right versus left paradigm because there are still very, very rich people from the from the, 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 the left wing, supposedly, that don't want to have anything to do with urban society. They, don't, they say to themselves, oh, you know, the, the upper crust of America, the 1%, have abandoned the public education system. There's nobody system. more. Look. Abandoned the public education system. Yeah. They don't send their kids to public school. I'm sorry. And also, we can expand on that and say, hey, do you think Obama would be president if he hadn't gone to Harvard? No, he had no real... and. Please pardon me if someone wants to debate it. I totally can out there. He didn't have a gigantic amount of accolades to run on. I specifically he remember. Didn't. I specifically remember them using in the media the fact that he was the editor of the Harvard Law Review as a selling point for his ability to run the government. And I always said to myself, where do you meet the future movers and shakers of society in private school? However, if you as a rich liberal individual step back and say, well, I don't need to fund you know, public school because that's not my problem, then don't complain when some poor, uneducated individual who had, didn't have a chance, who had every single aspect of his freedom uh, infringed upon by police, who couldn't get a regular job, had a felony at 18, and is now robbing and stealing, blows your kid's head off just to steal his 
a car that he doesn't know has a low jack in it or is worth half of what it was when it rolled off the lot. If you're not part of this society, then how the are you even going to sit there and pass judgment or claim that you want to help it or claim that you're even part of America? You're either part of this or you're not. The, the, the massive amount of corporations that make money off this country want their business exported from here, and yet they want to sell to people from here. They don't want to pay their fair share of what it costs to run this country, what it costs for the military to back up those areas where they're taking natural resources out of, but they want all the benefits of it. In other words, they want to have sex with America, but they don't want to marry her. They're whoring her out. And I have no respect for those type of people, whether they come from the left, whether they come from the right, and unfortunately, I tell people, what you're going to have to deal with now, Alex, is a whole lot of frauds coming into the libertarian movement. Frauds. Oh, no. Unabashed. Look at how Glenn Beck has now announced he's a leader of libertarians he's the leader while of trying to demonize him. That guy doesn't have both paddles in the water. And I don't know where he gets off thinking he's some kind of intellectual, moral, superior force to anybody else. You know, he's a guy who got thrown off a of fox. And... Uh, that's like a daytime talk show, and it, it, that's low. You know, I, I think at some point, without having the 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 credentials to make these statements, I think it gets lost in the woodwork. Well, my I, issue I, with I, one no, back. Let me just say, me just yeah. say this, because I know a lot of people that really are community activists. You know what I mean? That really are people who work within the community, and. They're not the ones that sit on their high horse talking down to people. They're the ones that get their hands dirty and work with the people. They're not the ones with the anxiety disorder who hang behind 20 bodyguards and won't be seen in public. They're the people that are actually on the street. And I have nothing but respect for those people. And it doesn't matter what... Well, I was about to say, I happen to know the inside scoop on Glenn Beck. He, he, he's obsessed with my show. <laughs> and, and no, no, no. And he's like an empty suit who takes acting lessons all day. And you're right, 20 bodyguards, totally scared, five bodyguards at his house. And I'm not, you know, I don't want to die, but I don't have any bodyguards. I'm not, you know. Uh, well, I mean, you got... <laughs> oh, yeah. This well, is I, worth like 20 bodyguards, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I'm mean, actually for tactical up close. I got a uh, Reaper 308. Anyways, the issue is I got a couple of guns. And, and hey, I bought that gun for guess how much? Five G's. Guess how much it's worth now? $25,000. Yeah, about 15 to 20. Yeah, yeah I seen them selling online. Yeah, and uh, you know, the good news is I bought a couple more before that. So, Jesus I mean, my, my, my issue is <laughs> I don't want to get into guns. It's kind of obnoxious, but I got a couple. <laughs> I'll leave it that way. And they're distributed all over the nation, and they're all mine. And they've made more, and they've gone up more than gold, which I also own a bit of. And, uh, you know. But let me ask you something then. What about the gun industry, the gun lobby? You know what I mean? When you got a guy like Wayne LaPierre, uh, LaPierre like, don't you think that he does more harm to the cause by not even acknowledging the deaths of people and just. He knows that they're going to. I mean, I'm not saying the NRA is part of it because it's kind of establishment. It's actually been anti gun in the past. If you look, it was set up with Northern soldiers, mainly Irish immigrants, never had shot. And so you could have like one Southerner kill 10 Northerners. So they started the National Rifle Association. But if we ever have another war, people need to know how to shoot. You know, scary as hell going against folks on how to shoot who've grown up doing it. So that's what it started as. Then they supported the 68 Gun Control Act. We basically took over the NRA, the, the Libertarian Constitutionalist. We took it over. Uh, and so now it's walking the walk because it because it well I, I, the the complaints I hear about it from people is that they say they only want specific people to have guns. In other words, they want prominent white Christian Americans to have guns, but when they're in the hands of people like the Black Panthers, other people who have self determination. When did they criticize that? No, no, I'm just saying that these are the criticisms that I. But heard that's made up. In fact, they, in fact, in fact, I've had Buzz Bissinger say I should be killed and stuff on CNN, and they go, Alex Jones is for guns because he wants black people to kill themselves, and the Klan is pro-gun, so blacks kill themselves. And the truth is, the Klan's the ones that got the first gun laws passed at the end of the Civil War, so blacks couldn't have guns. I, I, so I mean, make, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your point. I'm getting directly at the point that I hear this about the NRA. It's like they want blacks to kill themselves with guns, but they don't want blacks to have guns. And that's actually not what I'm. But I think uh, it's not so much what you're saying. I'm not criticizing what your stance is. I'm saying that they 
seem disingenuous about it because they don't speak to the community. I don't think they have, it's like, what, are these people, they're so brave and so strong, and yet they won't send a car full of three people into a black community to say, hey, you know what? These are your rights concerning gun laws. The next time you're thrown in prison by police that think you don't know your rights and think you're an easy vic for them to make money and, and, and keep you in prison, this is what you can do to keep yourself out. That's why they seem disingenuous. Oh, I agree Alex, with you. Because they don't go to well, the black Well, here's the deal. Most of these people. And they keep them. Sure, sure. Wayne LaPierre, I've actually been in an event he was speaking at. The guy was shaking for him to speak. I, I mean, here's the deal. You've got totally disconnected predominantly white, but there's also, I've been at these things, it's, it's everybody's there. They all like the same color. They're Hispanic, black, white. They're all totally focused, totally fake, and totally, because mm -hmm, they understand it's all a business meeting. And everybody's playing it as safe as they can at these events. And yes, the establishment types like that are so cloistered, so separated, so compartmentalized, where they go to the country club, they go to church, they do this, that they don't even know what planet they're on. So, so with the NRA... They just know that if they play along with Obama any and go, yes, we're very sad, that'll be spun against them. Right. Um, you know what? For me, someone once told me that it's better to talk to someone than about them. You know what I mean? I agree. So I, well, listen, I, you've seen I, me in New York. No, 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 but that's what I'm saying. I, would, I go out on the street. I would totally be willing to have a conversation with people, and please contact for, for people from the NRA to discuss what what sort of advice or what legal precedent are you setting up so that people who are victims of home invasion, victims of robbery, victims of every crime imaginable, you know what I mean? I don't want to turn everything into the shootout at the OK Corral, but at the same time, I see an entire generation of my people being incarcerated, being victimized simply because they don't understand their their rights under the law. Well, see, that's why I love Ron Paul. You know, the NRA should be a civil rights organization. It shouldn't just be, be in fact, I've said that. It, it should not just be defending the Second Amendment because they all interconnect. That's why I love Ron Paul. He'll give a speech about the CIA bringing in the drugs to destroy the communities. Look, you want to fix the communities. Now, now they've destroyed everybody so bad, as Ron Paul said, you got to keep welfare going because you got to wean people off over 20 years. We're already so screwed. But you've got to quit shipping the drugs in. You've got to decriminalize, and Mexico will get a lot better overnight. But this is the United the, States. And, and this is the other thing that I said. You know what? If people, and I, I, I always tell you, teach more with love than you do with hatred. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? If, if I can go to those rappers who rhyme about weed and I can tell them, hey, man, do you realize that your fan base is being criminalized and thrown in jail, that they're being having their rights? No, no, they the train them to right. put on a uniform no, 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 that the just, police have been trained to attack. But let me just finish my point. If those are your fans, why aren't you educating them about the rights that they have in terms of marijuana? Why aren't you educating about the way that they can legally protect themselves from this? The conversation in America shouldn't be, you know what? Are we going to legalize guns or not? No, you're never going to get rid of them. You're the rappers should be organizing, people that, saying, get involved. Here's how you protect yourself. Get the, a medical deal. On the weed side of it, too. You know what? At some point, the conversation stopped, and it should definitely stop being about whether we're going to legalize or not. The conversation needs to be now, are we going to legalize or decriminalize? What's better for the populace? What's better for people's rights? What's better per individual state? What's better to create... Well, once you bring money into it, 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 it that, that's the surest way to... You, they call it legalization, but if you legalize but regulate, but have it at the state level, it will, it will absolutely shut it down. Uh, and and be a huge tax base. And the saddest thing I hear is when people hit up my Twitter or the Facebook and they say, hey, Technique, you know, how can you be for marijuana legalization? What if someone got into a car while they were high and drove? And I'm like, dude, alcohol's legal. What if somebody got drunk? Well, marijuana makes you actually drive safer, probably. What if someone got drunk and got into a car? And somebody smoking pot drop at 45 in the slow lane over there scared. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. They stop every five miles for drive through yeah. Anyways, it's all crap. Listen, there's going to be bad stuff happening in the world. Anybody that tries to sell you on, let's do this. Let's take liberties. I heard a guy on the radio this morning going, let's have licenses to be able to buy alcohol. And, you know, a license to be a drinker as an adult. The nanny state isn't going to save us. It's all about cartels. They may, look, prohibition was over after nine years, as you know, a year early.
the very same entities went and lobbied then to get drugs illegal that you could buy at the corner drugstore. There was much less heroin, cocaine use. You could buy it at the local drugstore. Laudanum, you name it. They made it illegal. They made it cool. Now the dealers had the nice cars. Everybody thought it was fun. They got into it. And it's a total fraud. Absolutely. Uh, to young people out there, never use illegal drugs. Don't go on the prescription psychotropics. The least of our problems is marijuana. Decriminalize marijuana, not because it's good. I think overall it's destructive to a lot of people. <laughs> I but, disagree. But, well, okay, fine. <laughs> now I think a lot, there are a lot of potheads that are and eat pizza all day. But the point is, <laughs> is that... <laughs> is that oh, uh, Jesus. Is that, uh, no, I know, but some people people. The point is, is that it's much more destructive to make it illegal so the system has an excuse to throw people on the slammer and put them into the criminal culture. Look, here's my issue about marijuana. I know there's a lot of this high-end marijuana that actually makes you think and, 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 and has medical uses. The general public smoking a bunch of cruddy crap that makes you feel like you've been run over by a truck. And so, see, that's an elitist thing. Uh, I mean, people that can, like Joe Rogan, my friend, I mean, if Joe Rogan's around, I've said this a few times, he goes like, hey, try this. I, for five hours, I feel like I could do equations or something. But that's super high-end marijuana, different than the stuff that makes you feel like you've drank three bottles of Jack Daniels. No, I definitely think that's correct. And m more than just that, there's an old saying by a, a rap group I grew up listening to, uh, Nice and Smooth, and in hip-hop. They said, uh, too much of anything makes you an addict. You know, it's, it's, a, it's really about moderation in, in, some, in some sense of the word. And I think that's what people don't realize in, in terms of where public education has failed people. You have a class about calculus that people have to take. You know, most people... Don't want to do that. It's not just that, or, or a chemical class where a Bunsen burner, unless you work as a chem major uh, in college... You don't need it. Or you're building your own meth lab. How the fuck do you need to use something like that? You know, but where are the classes on parenting? that you're all gonna have to do at some point. Why don't high schools have classes on parenting? Why don't they have classes to teach people how to interact with the police so that they don't become the victim? Because they won't, not, listen, did you see in Arizona? I'm not where saying, they, no, we're not talking about why, they, I'm just saying, I'm, that's, that's. No, but did you see in Arizona, yeah. did you see in Arizona where they have, uh, guys look it up, we can pull it up. The biggest prison company out there, it's just changed its name. They now are the security at the schools and they literally are training the kids on how they're going to be prisoners when they get out of school. And now they have these agreements where 90% occupancy has to be agreed on in the private prisons. It's official, like Tulia, Texas, where they locked up the entire black population in the prison because the local boss hog owned it. Uh, so, so, so that's why that is. The schools are becoming prisons. This is a prison right. planet. I, I mean, my whole deal is don't underestimate how incredibly predatory the globalists are. I mean, they want to suck your energy out of you while killing you, and soon they're gonna have all the robots, and not just drones, but factory robots. They, the elite all says in their publications, like Bill Joy's famous article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us, that they're going to kill us. And see, that isn't something to scare people. That's why all the race stuff and all the fighting and all the crap doesn't matter. In the final equation, I don't care if you're some rich white yuppie or some poor inner city white person or whatever it is, you are having chemical and bioweapons put in the air and the food and the water. They're testing on you, just getting ready for their big move because they already have the life extension technologies. And the motive is a mortal technique, is they don't want you to have that. Like the guy says, I will destroy your seed forever and last the Mohicans. The globalists, all ancient groups were into that. They want all of our seed destroyed. We're not going to be part of the future. The ultimate Roman takeover was to kill the whole population and salt the earth. The globalists are salting the earth with GMO while building their underground seed vaults. It's Moonraker. Right. Ian and, Fleming, MI6, and, wrote that. And, and, Moonraker's and, real. And when people say to me, they say, oh, you know, are you, are you drinking that left-wing uh, Kool-Aid? I always say to them, it tastes just as good as the right-wing Monsanto's milk. Because Damn no matter right. which one you want and which one you're willing to, to, to absorb, I think you have to get past this paradigm. And I think that's where programs like this and what I do, you know, we don't have to agree about every single thing, but what we do agree about is that we don't want people to believe 
everything that we say. We want people to question everything. Full spectrum analysis. Yes. But then they can also go into the extreme where without proof, people just make up, well, this guy's this or this guy's that. In closing, the whole Bin Laden raid, zero dark 30s, torture porn. I'm going to do a review next week. I finally torture saw it. Torture porn. Wow. Uh, the the uh, martyr. Uh, tell us about the music after you get into your take on uh, Bin Laden and all the rest of it. The Martyr is a 100% free album. And when I say free, you can go to Viper Records right now and you can get it. It features all of my peoples from Rebel Arms. Big shout out to them. Uh, Poison Pen, Diabolic, G.I. Joe, I, I, The Circle, Hassan Salam, CF. Who am I leaving out? Point is, it's no, up no, there no. at the Viper <laughs> Records no, no. site. Everybody in that South Paul, big shout out to him. Um, basically, everybody that I came up with, Swave Seva, um, all the people that I have worked with over these years have been a part of this. We gave it for free. And when I say free, you don't have to fill out a survey. No 20 second Vivo commercial. You press one button, it's an absolutely free album. And the beauty of it was that I wanted to show people you don't have to die for revolution, Alex. That's not the point. Got to stop believing in the system. You have to live for revolution. That's what they're afraid of. Yeah, I like of. that. They're afraid of that. You don't have to die for revolution. You got to live for you it. You have to live for it. Change your way it, life. It's, it's easier for someone to sit there and say, you know, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory tomorrow, and I'm really going to make them pay, as opposed to say, you know what? I'm going to go through the painstaking suffering of raising a boy and two little girls in this damn near fascist society in order to raise them to look at the world differently and to see it's what a long haul is. beautifully said uh, let me ask you this the immortal technique that sounds like evergreen or an idea that transcends time tell me what immortal technique means and how i came up with that name well originally you know <laughs> when i was incarcerated uh my name was just technique that's just what i went by and i, I always remember there was a Native American trustee named Judge. He brought me a pen and a paper while I was in the hole. And I wrote a song on the first record I had called uh, The Prophecy. And I thought to myself, you know, in order for me to, to get my message across, it's going to have to span years of time. You know what I mean? What's going on right now, as you have pointed out, as I pointed out through history, has happened before. People have taken this away, people have taken that away, people have manipulated the system, people have used a proxy to get what they want done, people have put a smiling face off on, on things that really have the fangs of a vampire. At some point, we have to analyze this throughout history. And also, I'm a man who believes in God, and I believe that you know a man that walks with God can walk anywhere. So I don't fear death. I don't fear people trying to marginalize my, my point and my perspective, because I challenge them to meet me on the field of intellectual battle anytime, anywhere. Just give me, you know, a few days' notice so, you know. I can buy your mother a suit. That's all. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, you got to promise me that whenever you come through Texas, you'll come into the studio. And you got to promise every couple of months you'll come on via video Skype. <laughs> you know? I'll try my best, man. Thank you very much for having me on. You bet. It's been amazing. Uh, the Bin Laden raid. You didn't answer that. Bin Laden. Do you know what? They would have never wanted that man alive. They never wanted him to testify on all of his dealings as a CIA operative. I think when people look at that, in the past, I, I posted something on my uh, my Instagram on Tech Immortal, uh, an old uh, news clipping where he was being hailed as a hero, where he was. They were talking about him in the 80s. Like he was some like some kind of savior, and I always remember CIA Commando Bin Laden right. leads Afghan Mujahideen to victory against the Russians. They, they were talking about his the, the great things that he was. The doing Russians are pulling out. Bin Laden, Laden, what a kick-ass leader! Right. I always tell people, regardless of what you think about the story, regardless of what you think about what it was, that little dumping him in the water afterwards is a tiny, infinitesimal, microscopic part of a much larger story involving war, pimping for natural resources. You know, I went to Afghanistan. And, you know, it's in, it's in the documentary. We used the proceeds from an album I had called The Third World with a, 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 a human rights organization wow. called Omade International, O-M-E-I-D dot org, look them up, um, to build an orphanage in a school. And when people come up to me and they say, well, what do you think was the most effective thing that you did there? And I said, I showed them that 
Americans are not what they perceive them to be. You know what I mean? That most of them, when they look at us, are a bunch of people who have come to invade their country. And I didn't come there with the military. I didn't come there with the government. I came there not to bring people freedom, but to find it a You go to Afghanistan in this film? Uh, yeah. In you better give me a copy, right? <laughs> no, 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 we'll get you one, definitely. <laughs> All right, well, listen, that is just amazing. I'll just tell you, the whole Bin Laden thing's completely fake. I mean, I've done the research. And the zero dark 30, all of a complete crap. Hey, hey, zero, what did you think? Zero dark 30. You know, I, uh, that is torture porn movie, yes. Hey, uh, you saw it. I saw excerpts of it's it. It's amazing. I didn't get to see the whole it's thing. It's amazingly horrible. It, it's supposed to make torture and stuff sexy and then act like they don't like it, but they do. It's, it's, it's total yuppie power trip crap. Uh, in closing, what did you think when you came to the InfoWars studio? You've only walked right in and done the show. I need to show you the rest before you leave uh, here at the end of the show tonight. But I mean, what did you think to expect when you visited uh, the Texas Pumpkinheads house? No, I, I, I never expect anything. That's why I'm never disappointed. No, but what'd you, uh, so what do you think? Uh, there's a saying in Spanish, el diablo sabe más por ser viejo que sabe por ser diablo. It means the devil knows more because he's old than he does because he's the devil. So I didn't come in here with any preconceived notions. People uh, were saying, oh, you know, Alex is going to talk this way and talk that way. And I said, no, me and Alex are going to have a calm, peaceful, rational, non-yelling, fact-driven discussion. And that's the way it's going to go down. Because the bottom line is that the people who created the problems that our society is facing are not going to fix them. Well, yeah, you can say what you want only, about me and people, you. Only the people watching right but now. But I have goodwill. They're going to fix it. I have goodwill. I want you to have a great life, your kids to have a great life. I want them to experience and learn things. I want mine. My children and their progeny go forward into the future with everyone else. And this thing of screw everybody around you is just going to create a bad future for my progeny and your progeny. And it's that simple. I don't want to shed on each other anymore. Right. And it doesn't mean any of us have all the answers. It doesn't mean, but the point is we've got to have a good heart, but also be cynical and not buy into all the crap. Right. Immortal Technique. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very powerful. Infowars, Free Palestine, all the immigrants can't demonize us all. This is a nation of immigrants. Read between the lines, Infowars, Immortal Technique, Alex Jones. All right. Hang out for just a minute. I'm going to end the show. I'm going to give you a quick tour. Harlem. Uh, all right. Hold on right there. Uh, folks, we are out of time. That was over an hour interview. Uh, wow. Uh, I, I, I've uh, met Tech, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years ago in New York, hung out with him a few times, been at a few concerts he did, spoke at some of them, been on some demonstrations in New York, took over. What's the big one? The President's March Down, the famous We Took Broadway, or what is it? I don't know. Somebody was saying that whenever we shut down the highway. Uh, the point is, is that if this is the best interview ever, and I hope you go back, like he said, because it's true, I don't just make this stuff up. I may be wrong about a few things, but when I'm just spitting out data, I'm not, it's not just crap. Take it, take the words, take what he said, so much was said uh, as well by tech, and look at it, and take this hour plus interview. How long have we been going, Marcus? It's over an hour right now on InfoWars Nightly News, extended edition, and get this out because we have to get out of these controlled camps and really have a real college of ideas and debates, so that is it. For this Friday edition of InfoWars and Nightly News, I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, with the syndicated radio show, free podcast, audio links at InfoWars.com, video streams at PrisonPlanet.tv, and back next Monday for the radio show and the Nightly News. And again, remember, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. And like uh, our guest said, you don't have to die for the revolution. You've got to live for it. And the French say the best revenge is living well. I agree with them. Start voting with your dollars. Start voting with your mouth. Start, start resisting the system and promoting what's free and independent. And if you just do that, we'll have a better world. Well, that's it for this edition. Great job, crew. Pure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by Pro Pure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. 
Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 